delicious. We don't have to go to a show. Oh, let's see what he's got. I don't want to take whatever he's got just because it's cheap. I can't afford anything else. That reminds me. You remember that government funding application I made for you? No. Oh, a couple of months ago. Yeah. Well, it takes time to work its way through the system. Yeah. They're sending an evaluation rep from social services. Why? So he can waste more time evaluating us? I'm trying to help. I know, Rachel, but what else can I do? I mean, I've taken on more kids and I know I've helped them, but if something doesn't happen soon, I'm going to have to sell the sheep or... Not sell the sheep? Yes, the sheep. Or start knitting very expensive sweaters. There is an emergency fund I can tap into just to keep you afloat. But it's only good for 30 days. If you can get me another 30 days, I'll... be very grateful. There he is. Pin. Hey, Michael, what's up? Hold on the tone. Hi, Rachel, looking good. Hey, how come you always going out with the cowboy and never with me? What do you got for me, Pin? Are you my friend? Elevator music for two. Guy Sterling in his dancing clarinet. It's been a slow day. I love elevator music. See, and you don't even have to stand in an elevator. What do you think, Rachel? Well... Hey, it might not be your style, but the price is right. What I don't pay for, you don't pay for. Cool? Cool. Thanks, man. All right. Wow. Miss D, huh? You can hardly wait. A lot of fun, Rachel. So fun with seats. You can't treat the lady like that, man. So leave her alone. Keep walking, man. I heard you. Let me go, Task. Hey, I don't know where you come from, you know. But I don't want no problem from you. So let her go. What's that you say? You telling me? Yes, I'm telling you. That wasn't so bad. Nasty on your ankles, but you can try. And get the equal amount of strokes on each tooth. Okay. Let me show you how it's done. Uh, like this. Nice and smooth. Turn it. Yeah, you got it. No problem. Morning, Michael. Back in a second. Hi. Hi. That boy's come a long way since he first came here. Yeah. Reed told me he was pretty destructive. Self-destructive. He stole a car and drove into a brick wall. Lucky he's not dead. Yeah. His parents both died in a house fire four years ago. He's been rebelling against his aunt ever since. How's he been here? Oh, he's been great here. He works hard. He's got a smile on his face. But is he ready for the real world? I don't know. Sounds like you've developed a good relationship with him. Yeah. Not too good, I hope. Why the sudden interest in Jeremy? He's exactly the type of success story Mr. Granger's going to be looking for. Who's Granger? Oh, the evaluator for the grant. Yeah. 
I warn you, you do the worst possible card out of the deck with this guy. He's tough? How tough? <sighs> Rachel, you're getting me worried. You should be. He's very conservative, extremely arrogant, and he's got seniority. Mm -hmm. When's he coming? Today. Today? Yeah. Well, I gotta get ready. He wants to evaluate you, not date you. This is heavy. There's a few. Why can't he just use ketchup like everybody else? Hey, fine with me, you know. I hate tomatoes. What are you doing? Yeah, cut this one in half for me, would you? Wait till supper. Michael can pick his own tomatoes for dinner. We shouldn't have to do this anyways. It's like one of them... Prison work farms? Yeah, prison work farms. He gets rich off us. <laughs> Rick, you should be on a moron farm. He's a social worker with a good angle, man. You're wrong. And we get the tomatoes. Suck up. Go! We're Rick! Come on! Come on, Rick! Jump! Kill him, Rick! <laughs> Michael! Michael! Jeremy, get off! Break it up! Break it up! Who started this? I don't know, I didn't see. We're just sitting here. He started it. Well, I'm finished. Stay over there. Come here. I was defending you. They were cutting you up. Don't you think I can look after myself? I never said that. You want to help me? Yeah. Then help yourself. Today's the day, Jeremy. What if I don't want to go? Your time here is up. We've talked about this. So I'm going back to my ass just like that? Yeah. She's coming to pick you up tonight. I was just getting used to the place. Oh, you sure didn't like it when you first got here. What was it you wanted me to shove someplace? Yeah, well, I changed my mind. Good. Maybe you'll change your mind about your aunt. You've done good here, Jeremy. I'm proud of you. But it's time to go back to the real world. I wouldn't send you back if I didn't think you were ready. You can come and visit any time. Hello. Hey, Reed. What's up? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's coming here straight from detox? Yeah, yeah, I've got a place for him. Yeah. So now you're just going to give away my pet? Jeremy, it's not that I don't want you to stay here, but there's other kids. <laughs> Jeremy? Why didn't you put that saddle in the tack room where it belongs? Who said I had to? I'm saying you have to. Well, forget it, I'm busy. Young man, I don't have time to play your little game. Now you put that saddle back. Right now. Now you pick it up and you take it there, and I mean now. Excuse me. My name's Granger. I'm looking for Dr. Terry. Wait your turn, fungus face. We're all looking for him. Mr. Granger! Michael, do you want this back in the tack room? A good idea, Jeremy. Well, you better show me where it goes. Uh, I just put it anywhere in there. I'm busy right now. I've got things to do. Hi. Did I come at a bad time? No. Jeremy, isn't that the kid that Rachel was telling me about? Your success story? Yeah. He's done remarkably well. If we can convince the kids that they're safe here, that they're wanted, that they have a sense of worth, then we can begin to deal with the problems that sent them here in the first place. I don't see a heck of a lot of structure around here. We get up at six. We have our meals together. They do chores. They have some free time, then they go to bed. What more structure do we need? And I don't let the kids smoke in here. Or in the barn. I'm not one of the kids. 
Who supervises them? We show them what to do and how to do it, and then we leave them alone. What about therapy sessions? Treatment goals? I try to get both out of the daily routine. Hmm. I'd like to see your daily logs. I don't keep any. Critical incident reports? No. No critical incidents? The kids I've seen over the past 20 years are either always running away or slashing their wrists. Maybe they're trying to tell you something about your system. Oh, and you're a miracle worker, right? Just take the kids out for a horseback ride and that bounces the trouble out of them. No. I spend time with them. This is my house. My home. I don't do shift work. And I don't have time to do paperwork. Yes. It's a nice place you've got here. Too bad it's wasted on these kids. Well, Terry, I'll be able to say they eat well. Too well, in my opinion. I've got a lot to do. See you in the morning. Yeah. Bright and early. Is he gone? Yeah, I guess he had things to do. Are we having a staff meeting? Michael, how can you stand him? There's got to be another way, man. Fox? All I can say is I've known a few gentlemen in my time, and he's not one of them. Well, he has a certain style. He's a hanging judge, Michael. You seem to forget that we're here on trial. Has anybody stopped to think that maybe he's got pressures of his own? He's abrasive, yeah, but all we have to do is remember that. And keep in mind that there's a reason that he's like he is. He's not one of your kids. That man is set in his ways. And we need him, Fox. That must be Jeremy's aunt. Ah, he's helping me in the back. Jeremy! Hi. I'm Michael Terry. Yes, we spoke on the phone. That's right. Jeremy! You're late. It's quite a drive out here. Are you looking forward to getting back to the city? Sure. Are you ready to go? Get your things, Jeremy. How is he? Great. He really responded well. He doesn't look well. I think he's a little upset about leaving. He's been here long enough. Yeah, you're right. He's better off with you. Just, uh, just give him all the support you can. See you, Jeremy. You know, you're a real scum. Good day, huh, boss? Get in. Yes, suit man. Oh, you know my name. We met a couple times. You know my brother, Andre. <clears throat> oh, you're a little um, boomer. So how is your brother? In jail. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Hey, you know him. How sorry can you be? I've got a little business proposition for you. Yeah? What is it? 20 bills. <laughs> Go play with your brother, man. Information you want to hear. No, I don't. Five. No. It's worth it. Look, nothing you can tell me could possibly Pay two bucks. Get lost. OK, give me a quarter and I'll tell you. All right, now we're talking. One quarter. What's that pertinent information you have? This guy's coming to see you. You should have paid for 20. You've been making a move on Sherry. Me? No, man. She told me she loves you. No? Toss, listen. How come you know my name if you ain't been spending time with me? Maybe I said a few words like, who is that good-looking guy in the car? Sherry falls in love real quick. I know, and she told me she loves you. You. 
Hey, maybe you want a couple concert tickets like free. Hey, Conan, steroids can kill enough, especially me. I got here as soon as Michael called. And he wanted to come, but the evaluator at the ranch is giving him a headache. He asked me to give you this. Oh. Soap bubbles. <laughs> and he left the price on too. Look at that. Dollar ninety-eight. <laughs> Beautiful. Promises to bring you something special as soon as he gets the grant money. Tell him I'm not in a rush. What happened? I really don't want to talk about it. Are you pressing charges? Jealous boyfriend. Michael is responsible. Michael? His influence. Always help a lady in trouble. I do and look where it gets me. Well, how can you let the guy get away with this? I just want to leave those two lovers alone. Besides, I could use a holiday roundabout now. Jamaica, maybe. A coconut tree over there would be real nice. Well, I can't do much about the tree, but if you need anything... Wait a minute, you leaving? I've got to drop something off for Michael. Well, you like that guy anyway. He gets me into this. He doesn't even come visit me, and now he sends away my only visitor. What am I going to do in here? Well, you could always blow bubbles. <laughs> Get out of here. Bye. Jeremy's not home. Jeremy left his jacket at the ranch. Michael just wanted him to have it, so he asked me to drop it off. Tell him Michael says hello. Was Michael here? He left this back at the ranch. Didn't he want to see me? He was busy, Jeremy. Care. I care, Jeremy. Great. You got your jacket back? I know. It's too big. It makes me look like a geek. You love that jacket. I'm gonna go back to school. I can't wear this. What are the other boys wearing at school? I don't know. Head tops. Running shoes? No, they're they're not just running shoes. They're forget it. They they cost about a hundred bucks. Do you really want them? Yeah. Well, why don't I go in and get you the money and you can go down to the mall and buy them? Really?
with the fire down below So I climb the big sea To watch the river flow Katrina never spoke of weather Nor the mercy on a bed of nails But someone should have checked the waterline They're drowning in a mumba kids And this makes me Comes on like a bit of fire Tell me what the hell you think you're doing. I've come to take him back. You had your chance, Michael. Now we're going to try it my way. Well, what'd he do? He threw a garbage can at a cruiser while he was carrying cocaine. Oh, you really work wonders with him. Ooh, there's got to be more to it than that. Oh, there is. Jeremy's aunt blames you for the whole thing. Me? The boy wouldn't shut up about the ranch the whole time he was back. Then he goes out and buys drugs. Was he using them? Resting officer says no. I think I know why he did this. Well, that's very impressive. But this boy's up on drug charges now. Well, let me take him until the trial. You've got to be kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you, Reed. Listen, as soon as he leaves my custody, he goes out and he buys some drugs that he has no intention of taking. Then he goes and finds the first police car he can and he throws garbage at it. That's a good way to get arrested. Exactly. It's too good. This is a message directed right at me. I've been giving it some thought. I know what the problem is with the boy. Jeremy? Yes, I'd say it was a clear case of transference. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Trouble now is dealing with Jeremy's problem of termination. Every time he gets close to... Well, that's your fault, Terry. You get too close to these kids. Well, that's the whole idea behind the program. Well, I know. And that's what bothers me about it. Oh, is that what your report is going to say? My report, Dr. Terry. It's confidential.
one of you kids are trying to hide something. I want to know who stole my papers. Rolling papers? <laughs> you want to be a smart ass? I can have every one of you in a detention center. Ooh. You know, I've seen social workers like you before, Granger. I always wanted to pound me one. Yeah. You get yourselves into a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, I already did. How do you think I got in here, huh? <laughs> Terry! Terry! Hang on a second. What's going on? Get them to back off. Is this some kind of new bunkhouse activity I don't know about? <laughs> yeah, it's called Pound the Social Worker. <laughs> Why? What do you do? I didn't do a damn thing. But just a second, Mr. Granger. Rick? This fat dweeb here accuses us of stealing his papers. Are you gonna let him talk to me like that? You never heard that one before, Mr. Granger? No. I don't hear it again. What? Fat dweeb? <laughs> it's a term of endearment, right? Yeah, like doorkhead. But bring rat's ass. <laughs> See? Nothing to worry about. Yeah, we love him. Get a brick. Brick. I wasn't gonna hit him with it. No, of course not. You know, you guys are making it very difficult for me to make a good impression on Mr. Granger. Sweetheart, did I wake you? Oh, Sherry. Look, don't say anything, lover. I know how much it hurts. Sherry, we have to talk. Not now. I just want to hold you. No! Oh, too much pain. <sighs> Sherry, you want me to get better, don't you? Of course, dear. Well, I'm not going to get any better until... You... Until what? Until you and Tusk get back together. What? Sherry, Tusk is the man for you. I can see that as plain as the broken nose on my face. How come you got yourself all beat up if you don't love me? I got beat up because of Tusk, and I definitely don't love him. Tell me to me face you don't love me. Sherry, I'm sorry, but I don't really... You think you're too good for me, don't you? Oh! <laughs> no, Sherry, I didn't mean that. <sighs> You have no control over these kids. I'm sorry about what happened. You're sorry? I'm glad you went along with me. That wasn't my intention. You barged in there and started making accusations. You should have known how they'd react. Don't tell me what I know about these kids. What you did was not the smartest thing in the world to do. What about the way you let them talk to me? I had to defuse the situation, Granger. You know that. Don't take it personally. Damn right I'll take it personally. It's going in my report. And the theft. I can reconstruct my notes. I don't think you'll have to. You know where they are? I think I can get them back. Well, that's not going to make me change my mind. Not going so good, huh? How can you tell? It sounded like you had a lynching party on your hands. Yeah. The truth is, I can't blame the kids. He barged in there. He should have known better than that. That man has something stuck in his craw. Mm. That something stands between us and the money we need to keep this place going. Yeah, and what do we do? Change everything for him? Uh, well, you know the answer to that. Yeah. Michael. Got any idea who stole Granger's notes? Yeah. You want to tell me why? I don't know. I just did. They don't have any value to you. They do to you. So you thought I'd want you to steal for me? I didn't steal them. They're his. You took them. What else do you call it? I just wanted to help. And what makes you think I need your help? What? Well, I thought if Granger gave a bad report, we'll lose the ranch. That's still no reason to steal. Look, it's my home, too. I want to protect it. It's not your home. I need 
need to. If it was your home, you could leave any time you want, but you can't. You're stuck here for now. So? So the next time you throw garbage at a police car to try and get back here, they won't fall for it and I won't be able to help you. You just don't want me here. <sighs> Jeremy, you're welcome here any time you want. And if I happen to lose the ranch, then you're welcome to drop by the street corner where I'll be selling pencils. I just wanted to help. Well, I told you, the best way to help is to help yourself. Ranger? Come in. We should be all here. Did you read them? No. I'm surprised. I would have thought you'd been interested in what I had to say. I can wait till you're finished. I'd like to know how you've decided to punish the kid that took them. Well, he admitted it, and he returned everything. It's a big step forward for him. I don't want to punish him for it. He, he thought he was helping me. That's cause enough for punishment. If you've already made up your mind, Granger, what are you doing here? That's a good question. I still happen to have faith in my kids. I can see positive results. Your kids? Oh, for God's sakes, Granger, they're your kids too, aren't they? They're nobody's kids, that's why they're here. How can you ask them to be responsible for themselves when you're not willing to care that much for them? You know, I can't believe that if the government thought that the work we were doing here was worthwhile, they'd send a burnt-out cynic like you to be judge and jury of this place. Maybe they thought that somebody who'd been around as long as I have would see you for the self setting bastard you really are, Terry! What are you doing? I'm going back to the city. Wait, Granger, we're not going to get it. Take enough of this! I can't blame you, Michael. Really can't. I knew better than that. That man had his mind made up the minute he got here. All I had to do was not let him get to me. <laughs> you got to everybody else. I blew it, Fox. I should have known better. I blew it. Listen, let me ask you a question, Michael. That man Granger has something under his skin. That's a fact. Now, if you bent over backwards and you did everything his way, could you live with that? Or would that get under your skin, huh? Mr. Granger? Miss Woods. I need a favor. You spoke with your friend Terry. It's all a misunderstanding. Oh, no, no, no. It's perfectly clear. This shouldn't be a personal thing between you. It's the kids who suffer. Not only am I not recommending funding, I'm calling for a full investigation of his techniques. I assume this means you don't believe in the ranch. <laughs> Obviously. Well, I do believe in it. And you submit a request for funds. You didn't spend the full time you were supposed to. So? So, your report could be invalidated for insufficient study time. Only if somebody in the department lodges a complaint. I thought you... Thank you. For what? For showing me the truth about the man I love. Oh, Sherry... I... Task, you help me to love him again. You don't know how happy that makes me feel. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. I hope I didn't hurt you. I'm gonna hurt you. Jim Fowler's gonna be for your funeral. Task, no! Man, there's nothing left to break. I'll find something. Don't you be hitting on the man that taught me to love you again. You love me? Yes, I love you, stupid. And you talk Sherry into loving me again? Man, you two belong together. Oh, and all you did for the favor he did you was break all his bones. Man, 
I'm sorry I broke your bones. Task as usual, you teddy bear. Man is a diamond in a world of zircons. What's that mean? It means you're a lover, not a fighter. Chill. <laughs> Let's go. That's right. <laughs> Dr. Crawford, My royalty check is the same next quarter. We just might make it. Sure doesn't leave anything for emergencies. I admit it's cutting it pretty close, but we've been riding the edge for so long now, it won't make much difference. Forget something? A friend of yours talked me into staying the full duration. One more day. Rachel. She made a very convincing case. Well, I'm glad. I hope we can see things more eye to eye. I doubt it. But my report is not going to be compromised by any questions about execution. Think he could have had a change of heart? All right, you guys, I want you to listen to me. Who would listen to you? Granger's back. Oh, my favorite dweeb. <laughs> We're gonna have to be on our best behavior. You know, we should teach him a lesson, man. Yeah. Don't you mess it all up. Come on, man, give it a break. You guys are gonna mess everything up. Will you listen to me? This is crazy! Hey! more imagination when I was a kid. It wasn't me. I'm sure it wasn't. No. What were you doing in my car, then? I'm sorry, I just saw two guys... Oh, yeah, yeah, now you're gonna blame somebody else. Just make a, an ass out of good old Mr. Grange, who are you? No. You're a liar! Oh. Shh. Wouldn't want your daddy overhearing our little talk, would we? Michael's not my dad. No, 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 of course. No, Terry's just pretending to be your daddy. Hmm. He'll probably say you were dropping in to apologize. Is that what you're doing? Where? Hmm? I told you. Oh, yes. Right. You were... Uh, you were just going to let the air out of my tires to say you were sorry. Or were you going to slash them? You were, weren't you? 
Who are you? Mr. Granger, you've had a little too much to drink. Well, I'm... I'm celebrating. Shutting down this... stupid ranch. Terry and his damn ideas. He doesn't know anything about kids. You know, they want to send me back to school. Me. I've been in this business 20 years, and they want me to start doing things like Terry does. Well, I'm not going to take on this new wave crap. Well, if I... If I don't take the courses, then... Uh, I'm gone. You see, I... I know how to handle kids. Terry should be learning from me. Ah. To hell with you. Are you free to fire? Oh, yes, that's... saw your mother and father died. When I was 11. Look, I... I'm not gonna hurt you, just... Just, just get out of here. Go on, get out of here! Up. I thought you were dead. I'm okay. I'm okay. How's the boy? He'll be fine. Thank goodness. about the shed. Uh, it was an accident. Thanks for coming here. Yeah. Uh, I'll repay every penny to the period. Well, that's not going to solve your problem, Granger. Oh, I don't have a... This may be a right. Yeah. Do you mind Terry telling me what's going to happen to Jeremy? He's going to live with his aunt until the sentencing. He thought it would look better to the judge if he was living with her. He thought? Yeah, that's his decision. Well, his problem was dependency. Seems like you have been successful with him. Will that make it in your report? Well, my report is confidential. Yeah.
Well, goodbye, Michael. Jeremy. Hope to see you soon. Not too soon. <sighs> How about a visit? <laughs> Anytime. What's he doing? Looks like he's throwing some garbage away.